Sponges, the members of the phylum Porifera, meaning poor bearer, are a basal metazoa animal clade as a sister of the diploblasts. They are multicellular organisms that have bodies full of pores and channels allowing water to circulate through them, consisting of jelly-like mesole sandwiched between two thin layers of cells. The branch of zoology that studies sponges is known as spongiology. Sponges have unspecialized cells that can transform into other types and that often migrate between the main cell layers and the mesole in the process. Sponges do not have nervous, digestive or circulatory systems. Instead, most rely on maintaining a constant water flow through their bodies to obtain food and oxygen and to remove wastes. Sponges were first to branch off the evolutionary tree from the common ancestor of all animals, making them the sister group of all other animals. Topic. Etymology The term sponge derives from the ancient Greek word spongos, spongos. Topic. Overview Sponges are similar to other animals in that they are multicellular, heterotrophic, lack cell walls and produce sperm cells. Unlike other animals, they lack true tissues and organs. Some of them are radially symmetrical, but most are asymmetrical. The shapes of their bodies are adapted for maximal efficiency of water flow through the central cavity, where the water deposits nutrients and then leaves through a hole called the osculum. Many sponges have internal skeletons of spongin and or spicules skeletal-like fragments of calcium carbonate or silicon dioxide. All sponges are sessile aquatic animals, meaning that they attach to an underwater surface and remain fixed in place i.e., do not travel. Although there are freshwater species, the great majority are marine salt water species, ranging in habitat from tidal zones to depths exceeding 8,800 meters 5.5 miles. Although most of the approximately 5,000 to 10,000 known species of sponges feed on bacteria and other microscopic food in the water, some host photosynthesizing microorganisms as endosymbionts, and these alliances often produce more food and oxygen than they consume. A few species of sponges that live in food-poor environments have evolved as carnivores that prey mainly on small crustaceans. Most species use sexual reproduction, releasing sperm cells into the water to fertilize ova that in some species are released and in others are retained by the mother. The fertilized eggs develop into larvae, which swim off in search of places to settle. Sponges are known for regenerating from fragments that are broken off, although this only works if the fragments include the right types of cells. A few species reproduce by budding. When environmental conditions become less hospitable to the sponges, for example as temperatures drop, many freshwater species and a few marine ones produce gemules, survival pods of unspecialized cells that remain dormant until conditions improve, they then either form completely new sponges or recolonize the skeletons of their parents. In most sponges, an internal gelatinous matrix called mesole functions as an endoskeleton, and it is the only skeleton in soft sponges that encrust such hard surfaces as rocks. More commonly, the mesole is stiffened by mineral spicules, by spongin fibers, or both. Demosponges use spongin, many species have silica spicules, whereas some species have calcium carbonate exoskeletons. Demosponges constitute about 90% of all known sponge species, including all freshwater ones, and they have the widest range of habitats. Calcareous sponges, which have calcium carbonate spicules and, in some species, calcium carbonate exoskeletons, are restricted to relatively shallow marine waters where production of calcium carbonate is easiest. The fragile glass sponges, with scaffolding of silica spicules, are restricted to polar regions and the ocean depths where predators are rare. Fossils of all of these types have been found in rocks dated from 580 million years ago. 
In addition archaeocyathids, whose fossils are common in rocks from 530 to 490 million years ago, are now regarded as a type of sponge. The single-celled coanoflagellates resemble the coanocyte cells of sponges which are used to drive their water flow systems and capture most of their food. This along with phylogenetic studies of ribosomal molecules have been used as morphological evidence to suggest sponges are the sister group to the rest of animals. Some studies have shown that sponges do not form a monophyletic group, in other words do not include all and only the descendants of a common ancestor. Recent phylogenetic analyses suggest that comb jellies rather than sponges are the sister group to the rest of animals. The few species of demosponge that have entirely soft fibrous skeletons with no hard elements have been used by humans over thousands of years for several purposes, including as padding and as cleaning tools. By the 1950s, though, these had been overfished so heavily that the industry almost collapsed, and most sponge-like materials are now synthetic. Sponges and their microscopic endosymbionts are now being researched as possible sources of medicines for treating a wide range of diseases. Dolphins have been observed using sponges as tools while foraging. Topic. Distinguishing features Sponges constitute the phylum Porifera, and have been defined as sessile metazoans multicelled immobile animals that have water intake and outlet openings connected by chambers lined with coanocytes, cells with whip-like flagella. However, a few carnivorous sponges have lost these water flow systems and the coanocytes. All known living sponges can remold their bodies, as most types of their cells can move within their bodies and a few can change from one type to another, even if a few sponges are able to produce mucus, which acts as a microbial barrier in all other animals. No sponge with the ability to secrete a functional mucus layer has been recorded. Without such a mucus layer their living tissue is covered by a layer of microbial symbionts, which can contribute up to 40-50% of the sponge wet mass. This inability to prevent microbes from penetrating their porous tissue could be a major reason why they have never evolved a more complex anatomy, like cnidarians jellyfish, etc., and tenophores comb jellies, and unlike all other known metazoans, sponges' bodies consist of a non-living jelly-like mass messagely, sandwiched between two main layers of cells. Cnidarians and tenophores have simple nervous systems, and their cell layers are bound by internal connections and by being mounted on a basement membrane, thin fibrous mat, also known as basal lamina. Sponges have no nervous systems, their middle jelly-like layers have large and varied populations of cells, and some types of cells in their outer layers may move into the middle layer and change their functions. Topic. Basic structure Topic. Cell types A sponge's body is hollow and is held in shape by the mesole, a jelly-like substance made mainly of collagen and reinforced by a dense network of fibers also made of collagen. The inner surface is covered with coanocytes, cells with cylindrical or conical collars surrounding one flagellum per coanocyte. The wave-like motion of the whip-like flagella dries water through the sponge's body. All sponges have ostea, channels leading to the interior through the mesole, and in most sponges these are controlled by tube-like porocytes that form closable inlet valves. Pinacocytes, plate-like cells, form a single-layered external skin over all other parts of the mesole that are not covered by coanocytes, and the pinacocytes also digest food particles that are too large to enter the ostea, while those at the base of the animal are responsible for anchoring it. Other types of cell live and move within the mesole. Lophocytes are amoeba-like cells that move slowly through the mesole and secrete collagen fibers. Colonocytes are another type of collagen-producing cell. 
Rhabdiferous cells secrete polysaccharides that also form part of the mesol. Oocytes and spermatocytes are reproductive cells. Sclerocytes secrete the mineralized spicules, little spines, that form the skeletons of many sponges and in some species provide some defense against predators. In addition to or instead of sclerocytes, demosponges have spongocytes that secrete a form of collagen that polymerizes into spongin, a thick fibrous material that stiffens the mesol. Myocytes, muscle cells, conduct signals and cause parts of the animal to contract. Gray cells, act as sponges equivalent of an immune system. Archaeocytes or amoebocytes are amoeba-like cells that are totipotent, in other words each is capable of transformation into any other type of cell. They also have important roles in feeding and in clearing debris that block the ostea. Many larval sponges possess neuron-less eyes that are based on cryptochromes. They mediate phototaxic behavior. Topic. Glass sponges syncytia Glass sponges present a distinctive variation on this basic plan. Their spicules, which are made of silica, form a scaffolding-like framework between whose rods the living tissue is suspended like a cobweb that contains most of the cell types. This tissue is a syncytium that in some ways behaves like many cells that share a single external membrane, and in others like a single cell with multiple nuclei. The mesole is absent or minimal. The syncytium cytoplasm, the soupy fluid that fills the interiors of cells, is organized into rivers that transport nuclei, organelles, organs within cells and other substances. Instead of coanocytes, they have further syncytia, known as coanosyncytia, which form bell-shaped chambers where water enters via perforations. The insides of these chambers are lined with collar bodies, each consisting of a collar and flagellum but without a nucleus of its own. The motion of the flagella sucks water through passages in the cobweb and expels it via the open ends of the bell-shaped chambers. Some types of cells have a single nucleus and membrane each, but are connected to other single nucleus cells and to the main syncytium by bridges made of cytoplasm. The sclerocytes that build spicules have multiple nuclei, and in glass sponge larvae they are connected to other tissues by cytoplasm bridges. Such connections between sclerocytes have not so far been found in adults, but this may simply reflect the difficulty of investigating such small scale features. The bridges are controlled by plugged junctions that apparently permit some substances to pass while blocking others. Topic. Water flow and body structures Most sponges work rather like chimneys, they take in water at the bottom and eject it from the osculum little mouth, at the top. Since ambient currents are faster at the top, the suction effect that they produce by Bernoulli's principle does some of the work for free. Sponges can control the water flow by various combinations of wholly or partially closing the osculum and ostea the intake pores and varying the beat of the flagella, and may shut it down if there is a lot of sand or silt in the water, although the layers of pinacocytes and coanocytes resemble the epithelia of more complex animals, they are not bound tightly by cell-to-cell -cell connections or a basal lamina thin fibrous sheet underneath. The flexibility of these layers and remodeling of the mesole by lophocytes allow the animals to adjust their shapes throughout their lives to take maximum advantage of local water currents. The simplest body structure in sponges is a tube or vase shape known as asconoid, but this severely limits the size of the animal. The body structure is characterized by a stalk like spongiseal surrounded by a single layer of coanocytes. If it is simply scaled up, the ratio of its volume to surface area increases, because surface increases as the square of length or width while volume increases proportionally to the cube. 
The amount of tissue that needs food and oxygen is determined by the volume, but the pumping capacity that supplies food and oxygen depends on the area covered by coanocytes. Askinoid sponges seldom exceed 1 mm in, in diameter. Some sponges overcome this limitation by adopting the psychonoid structure, in which the body wall is pleated. The inner pockets of the pleats are lined with coanocytes, which connect to the outer pockets of the pleats by ostia. This increase in the number of coanocytes and hence in pumping capacity enables psychonoid sponges to grow up to a few centimeters in diameter. The leukonoid pattern boosts pumping capacity further by filling the interior almost completely with mesol that contains a network of chambers lined with coanocytes and connected to each other and to the water intakes and outlet by tubes. Leuconid sponges grow to over 1 meter 3.3 feet in diameter, and the fact that growth in any direction increases the number of coanocyte chambers enables them to take a wider range of forms, for example, encrusting sponges whose shapes follow those of the surfaces to which they attach. All freshwater and most shallow water marine sponges have leuconid bodies. The networks of water passages in glass sponges are similar to the leuconid structure. In all three types of structure the cross-section area of the coanocyte lined regions is much greater than that of the intake and outlet channels. This makes the flow slower near the coanocytes and thus makes it easier for them to trap food particles. For example, in leuconia, a small leuconoid sponge about 10 cm in tall and 1 cm in, in diameter, water enters each of more than 80,000 intake canals at 6 cm per minute. However, because leuconia has more than 2 million flagellated chambers whose combined diameter is much greater than that of the canals, water flow through chambers slows to 3.6 cm per hour, making it easy for coanocytes to capture food. All the water is expelled through a single osculum at about 8.5 cm per second, fast enough to carry waste products some distance away. Skeleton In zoology a skeleton is any fairly rigid structure of an animal, irrespective of whether it has joints and irrespective of whether it is biomineralized. The mesoel functions as an endoskeleton in most sponges, and is the only skeleton in soft sponges that encrust hard surfaces such as rocks. More commonly the mesol is stiffened by mineral spicules, by spongin fibers or both. Spicules, which are present in most but not all species, may be made of silica or calcium carbonate, and vary in shape from simple rods to three-dimensional stars, with up to six rays. Spicules are produced by sclerocyte cells, and may be separate, connected by joints, or fused. Some sponges also secrete exoskeletons that lie completely outside their organic components. For example, sclerosponges, hard sponges, have massive calcium carbonate exoskeletons over which the organic matter forms a thin layer with coanocyte chambers in pits in the mineral. These exoskeletons are secreted by the pinacocytes that form the animal's skins. Topic: Vital functions. Topic: Movement. Although adult sponges are fundamentally sessile animals, some marine and freshwater species can move across the seabed at speeds of 1 to 4 mm .039 to in per day, as a result of amoeba-like movements of pinacocytes and other cells. A few species can contract their whole bodies, and many can close their oscula and ostia. Juveniles drift or swim freely, while adults are stationary. Topic. Respiration, feeding and excretion 
Sponges do not have distinct circulatory, respiratory, digestive, and excretory systems, instead the water flow system supports all these functions. They filter food particles out of the water flowing through them. Particles larger than 50 micrometers cannot enter the ostea and pinacocytes consume them by phagocytosis engulfing an internal digestion. Particles from 0.5 micrometers to 50 micrometers are trapped in the ostea, which taper from the outer to inner ends. These particles are consumed by pinacocytes or by archaeocytes which partially extrude themselves through the walls of the ostea. Bacteria-sized particles, below 0.5 micrometers, pass through the ostea and are caught and consumed by coanocytes. Since the smallest particles are by far the most common, coanocytes typically capture 80% of a sponge's food supply. Archaeocytes transport food packaged in vesicles from cells that directly digest food to those that do not. At least one species of sponge has internal fibers that function as tracks for use by nutrient-carrying archaeocytes, and these tracks also move inert objects. It used to be claimed that glass sponges could live on nutrients dissolved in sea water and were very averse to silt. However, a study in 2007 found no evidence of this and concluded that they extract bacteria and other microorganisms from water very efficiently about 79% and process suspended sediment grains to extract such prey. Collar bodies digest food and distribute it wrapped in vesicles that are transported by dynean motor molecules along bundles of microtubules that run throughout the syncytium. Sponges' cells absorb oxygen by diffusion from water into cells as water flows through body, into which carbon dioxide and other soluble waste products such as ammonia also diffuse. Archaeocytes remove mineral particles that threaten to block the ostea, transport them through the mesole and generally dump them into the outgoing water current, although some species incorporate them into their skeletons. Topic. Carnivorous sponges A few species that live in waters where the supply of food particles is very poor prey on crustaceans and other small animals. So far only 137 species have been discovered. Most belong to the family Clatterhizidae, but a few members of the Gataridae and Asperiopsidae are also carnivores. In most cases little is known about how they actually capture prey, although some species are thought to use either sticky threads or hooked spicules. Most carnivorous sponges live in deep waters, up to 8,840 meters 5.49 miles, and the development of deep ocean exploration techniques is expected to lead to the discovery of several more. However, one species has been found in Mediterranean caves at depths of 17 to 23 meters (56 to 75 feet) alongside the more usual filter feeding sponges. The cave-dwelling predators capture crustaceans under 1 mm (0.039 in) long by entangling them with fine threads, digest them by enveloping them with further threads over the course of a few days, and then return to their normal shape. There is no evidence that they use venom. Most known carnivorous sponges have completely lost the water flow system and coanocytes. However, the genus Chondrocladia uses a highly modified water flow system to inflate balloon-like structures that are used for capturing prey. Topic: Endosymbionts. Freshwater sponges often host green algae as endosymbionts within archaeocytes and other cells and benefit from nutrients produced by the algae. Many marine species host other photosynthesizing organisms, most commonly cyanobacteria but in some cases dinoflagellates. Symbiotic cyanobacteria may form a third of the total mass of living tissue in some sponges, and some sponges gain 48% to 80% of their energy supply from these microorganisms. 
In 2008 a University of Stuttgart team reported that spicules made of silica conduct light into the mesol, where the photosynthesizing endosymbionts live. Sponges that host photosynthesizing organisms are most common in waters with relatively poor supplies of food particles, and often have leafy shapes that maximize the amount of sunlight they collect. A recently discovered carnivorous sponge that lives near hydrothermal vents hosts methane eating bacteria and digests some of them. Topic. Immune system Sponges do not have the complex immune systems of most other animals. However, they reject grafts from other species but accept them from other members of their own species. In a few marine species, gray cells play the leading role in rejection of foreign material. When invaded, they produce a chemical that stops movement of other cells in the affected area, thus preventing the intruder from using the sponge's internal transport systems. If the intrusion persists, the gray cells concentrate in the area and release toxins that kill all cells in the area. The immune system can stay in this activated state for up to three weeks. Topic. Reproduction Topic. Asexual Sponges have three asexual methods of reproduction, after fragmentation, by budding, and by producing gemmules. Fragments of sponges may be detached by currents or waves. They use the mobility of their pinacocytes and coanocytes and reshaping of the mesol to re-attach themselves to a suitable surface and then rebuild themselves as small but functional sponges over the course of several days. The same capabilities enable sponges that have been squeezed through a fine cloth to regenerate. A sponge fragment can only regenerate if it contains both colonocytes to produce mesol and archaeocytes to produce all the other cell types. A very few species reproduce by budding. Gemmules are survival pods, which a few marine sponges and many freshwater species produce by the thousands when dying and which some, mainly freshwater species, regularly produce in autumn. Spongicytes make gemmules by wrapping shells of spongin, often reinforced with spicules, round clusters of archaeocytes that are full of nutrients. Freshwater gemmules may also include phytosynthesizing symbionts. The gemmules then become dormant, and in this state can survive cold, drying out, lack of oxygen and extreme variations in salinity. Freshwater gemmules often do not revive until the temperature drops, stays cold for a few months and then reaches a near normal level. When a gemmule germinates, the archaeocytes round the outside of the cluster transform into pinacocytes, a membrane over a pore in the shell bursts, the cluster of cells slowly emerges, and most of the remaining archaeocytes transform into other cell types needed to make a functioning sponge. Gemmules from the same species but different individuals can join forces to form one sponge. Some gemmules are retained within the parent sponge, and in spring it can be difficult to tell whether an old sponge has revived or been recolonized by its own gemmules. Topic. Sexual Most sponges are hermaphrodites function as both sexes simultaneously, although sponges have no gonads reproductive organs. Sperm are produced by coanocytes or entire coanocyte chambers that sink into the mesol and form spermatic cysts while eggs are formed by transformation of archaeocytes, or of coanocytes in some species. Each egg generally acquires a yolk by consuming nurse cells. During spawning, sperm burst out of their cysts and are expelled via the osculum. 
if they contact another sponge of the same species, the water flow carries them to coanocytes that engulf them but, instead of digesting them, metamorphose to an amoeboid form and carry the sperm through the mesol to eggs, which in most cases engulf the carrier and its cargo. A few species release fertilized eggs into the water, but most retain the eggs until they hatch. There are four types of larvae, but all are balls of cells with an outer layer of cells whose flagellae or cilia enable the larva to move. After swimming for a few days the larva sink and crawl until they find a place to settle. Most of the cells transform into archaeocytes and then into the types appropriate for their locations in a miniature adult sponge. Glass sponge embryos start by dividing into separate cells, but once 32 cells have formed they rapidly transform into larvae that externally are ovoid with a band of cilia around the middle that they use for movement, but internally have the typical glass sponge structure of spicules with a cobweb-like main syncytium draped around and between them and coanocytes with multiple collar bodies in the center. The larvae then leave their parents' bodies. Topic. Life cycle Sponges in temperate regions live for at most a few years, but some tropical species and perhaps some deep ocean ones may live for 200 years or more. Some calcified demosponges grow by only 0.2 mm in per year and, if that rate is constant, specimens 1 m wide must be about 5,000 years old. Some sponges start sexual reproduction when only a few weeks old, while others wait until they are several years old. Topic. Coordination of activities Adult sponges lack neurons or any other kind of nervous tissue. However, most species have the ability to perform movements that are coordinated all over their bodies, mainly contractions of the pinacocytes, squeezing the water channels and thus expelling excess sediment and other substances that may cause blockages. Some species can contract the osculum independently of the rest of the body. Sponges may also contract in order to reduce the area that is vulnerable to attack by predators. In cases where two sponges are fused, for example if there is a large but still unseparated bud, these contraction waves slowly become coordinated in both of the Siamese twins. The coordinating mechanism is unknown, but may involve chemicals similar to neurotransmitters. However, glass sponges rapidly transmit electrical impulses through all parts of the syncytium, and use this to halt the motion of their flagella if the incoming water contains toxins or excessive sediment. Myocytes are thought to be responsible for closing the osculum and for transmitting signals between different parts of the body. Sponges contain genes very similar to those that contain the recipe for the postsynaptic density, an important signal receiving structure in the neurons of all other animals. However, in sponges, these genes are only activated in flask cells that appear only in larvae and may provide some sensory capability while the larvae are swimming. This raises questions about whether flask cells represent the predecessors of true neurons or are evidence that sponges' ancestors had true neurons but lost them as they adapted to a sessile lifestyle. Topic. Ecology. Topic. Habitats Sponges are worldwide in their distribution, living in a wide range of ocean habitats, from the polar regions to the tropics. Most live in quiet, clear waters, because sediment stirred up by waves or currents would block their pores, making it difficult for them to feed and breathe. 
The greatest numbers of sponges are usually found on firm surfaces such as rocks, but some sponges can attach themselves to soft sediment by means of a root like base. Sponges are more abundant but less diverse in temperate waters than in tropical waters, possibly because organisms that prey on sponges are more abundant in tropical waters. Glass sponges are the most common in polar waters and in the depths of temperate and tropical seas, as their very porous construction enables them to extract food from these resource-poor waters with the minimum of effort. Demosponges and calcareous sponges are abundant and diverse in shallower nonpolar waters. The different classes of sponge live in different ranges of habitat. Topic. As primary producers Sponges with photosynthesizing endosymbionts produce up to three times more oxygen than they consume, as well as more organic matter than they consume. Such contributions to their habitat's resources are significant along Australia's Great Barrier Reef but relatively minor in the Caribbean. Topic. Defenses Many sponges shed spicules, forming a dense carpet several meters deep that keeps away echinoderms which would otherwise prey on the sponges. They also produce toxins that prevent other sessile organisms such as bryozoans or sea squirts from growing on or near them, making sponges very effective competitors for living space. One of many examples includes agelifarin. A few species, the Caribbean fire sponge Tadania ignis, cause a severe rash in humans who handle them. Turtles and some fish feed mainly on sponges. It is often said that sponges produce chemical defenses against such predators. However, experiments have been unable to establish a relationship between the toxicity of chemicals produced by sponges and how they taste to fish, which would diminish the usefulness of chemical defenses as deterrents. Predation by fish may even help to spread sponges by detaching fragments. However, some studies have shown fish showing a preference for non-chemically defended sponges, and another study found that high levels of coral predation did predict the presence of chemically defended species. Glass sponges produce no toxic chemicals, and live in very deep water where predators are rare. Topic. Predation Sponge flies, also known as spongilla flies Neuroptera, Ciceridae, are specialist predators of freshwater sponges. The female lays her eggs on vegetation overhanging water. The larvae hatch and drop into the water where they seek out sponges to feed on. They use their elongated mouthparts to pierce the sponge and suck the fluids within. The larvae of some species cling to the surface of the sponge while others take refuge in the sponge's internal cavities. The fully grown larvae leave the water and spin a cocoon in which to pupate. Topic: <inaudible> Bioerosion. The Caribbean chicken liver sponge Chondrilla nucula secretes toxins that kill coral polyps, allowing the sponges to grow over the coral skeletons. Others, especially in the family Clionidae, use corrosive substances secreted by their archaeocytes to tunnel into rocks, corals and the shells of dead mollusks. Sponges may remove up to 1 meter 3.3 feet per year from reefs, creating visible notches just below low tide level. Topic. Diseases Caribbean sponges of the genus Aplicina suffer from Aplicina red band syndrome. This causes Aplicina to develop one or more rust-colored bands, sometimes with adjacent bands of necrotic tissue. These lesions may completely encircle branches of the sponge. The disease appears to be contagious and impacts approximately 10% of A. coliformis on Bahamian reefs. 
The rust colored bands are caused by a cyanobacterium, but it is unknown whether this organism actually causes the disease. Topic. Collaboration with other organisms In addition to hosting photosynthesizing endosymbionts, sponges are noted for their wide range of collaborations with other organisms. The relatively large encrusting sponge Lysodendorix columbiensis is most common on rocky surfaces, but has extended its range into seagrass meadows by letting itself be surrounded or overgrown by seagrass sponges, which are distasteful to the local starfish and therefore protect Lysodendorix against them. In return, the seagrass sponges get higher positions away from the sea floor sediment. Shrimps of the genus Synalpheus form colonies in sponges, and each shrimp species inhabits a different sponge species, making Synalpheus one of the most diverse crustacean genera. Specifically, Synalpheus regalis utilizes the sponge not only as a food source, but also as a defense against other shrimp and predators. As many as 16,000 individuals inhabit a single loggerhead sponge, feeding off the larger particles that collect on the sponge as it filters the ocean to feed itself. Topic. Systematics and evolutionary history Topic. Taxonomy Linnaeus, who classified most kinds of sessile animals as belonging to the order Zoophyta in the class Vermes, mistakenly identified the genus Spongia as plants in the order Algae. For a long time thereafter sponges were assigned to a separate subkingdom, Parazoa, beside the animals, separate from the Yametazoa which formed the rest of the kingdom Animalia. They have been regarded as a paraphyletic phylum, from which the higher animals have evolved. Other research indicates Porifera as monophyletic, the phylum Porifera is further divided into classes mainly according to the composition of their skeletons. Hexactinellida glass sponges have silicate spicules, the largest of which have six rays and may be individual or fused. The main components of their bodies are syncytia in which large numbers of cells share a single external membrane. Calcarea have skeletons made of calcite, a form of calcium carbonate, which may form separate spicules or large masses. All the cells have a single nucleus and membrane. Most demospongiae have silicate spicules or spongin fibers or both within their soft tissues. However, a few also have massive external skeletons made of aragonite, another form of calcium carbonate. All the cells have a single nucleus and membrane. Archaeocyatha are known only as fossils from the Cambrian period. In the 1970s, sponges with massive calcium carbonate skeletons were assigned to a separate class, Sclerospongiae, otherwise known as coralline sponges. However, in the 1980s it was found that these were all members of either the Calcarea or the Demospongiae. So far scientific publications have identified about 9,000 poriferin species, of which, about 400 are glass sponges, about 500 are calcareous species, and the rest are demosponges. However, some types of habitat, vertical rock and cave walls and galleries in rock and coral boulders, have been investigated very little, even in shallow seas. Topic. Classes Sponges were traditionally distributed in three classes, calcareous sponges, calcarea, glass sponges and demosponges However, studies have shown that the homoscleromorpha, a group thought to belong to the demospongiae, is actually phylogenetically well separated. Therefore, they have recently been recognized as the fourth class of sponges. Sponges are divided into classes mainly according to the composition of their skeletons. Topic. Fossil record 
Although molecular clocks and biomarkers suggest sponges existed well before the Cambrian explosion of life, silica spicules like those of demosponges are absent from the fossil record until the Cambrian. One unsubstantiated report exists of spicules in rocks dated around 750 million years ago. Well-preserved fossil sponges from about 580 million years ago in the Ediacaran period have been found in the Duchantuo Formation. These fossils, which include spicules, pinacocytes, porocytes, archaeocytes, sclerocytes and the internal cavity, have been classified as demosponges. Fossils of glass sponges have been found from around 540 million years ago in rocks in Australia, China and Mongolia. Early Cambrian sponges from Mexico belonging to the genus Coetinochia show evidence of fusion of several smaller spicules to form a single large spicule. Calcium carbonate spicules of calcareous sponges have been found in early Cambrian rocks from about 530 to 523 million years ago in Australia. Other probable demosponges have been found in the early Cambrian Chengjiang fauna, from 525 to 520 million years ago. Freshwater sponges appear to be much younger, as the earliest known fossils date from the mid-Eocene period about 48 to 40 million years ago. Although about 90% of modern sponges are demosponges, fossilized remains of this type are less common than those of other types because their skeletons are composed of relatively soft spongin that does not fossilize well. Earliest sponge symbionts are known from the early Silurian, a chemical tracer as 24 isopropylcholestane, which is a stable derivative of 24 isopropylcholesterol, which is said to be produced by demosponges but not by yametazoans, true animals, i.e., cnidarians and bilaterians. Since coenoflagellates are thought to be animals' closest single-celled relatives, a team of scientists examined the biochemistry and genes of one coenoflagellate species. They concluded that this species could not produce 24 isopropyl cholesterol but that investigation of a wider range of coenoflagellates would be necessary in order to prove that the fossil 24 isopropyl cholestane could only have been produced by demosponges. Although a previous publication reported traces of the chemical 24 isopropylcholestane in ancient rocks dating to 1,800 million years ago, recent research using a much more accurately dated rock series has revealed that these biomarkers only appear before the end of the Marinoan glaciation approximately 635 million years ago, and that Biomarker analysis has yet to reveal any convincing evidence for ancient sponges pre-dating the first globally extensive Neoproterozoic glacial episode the Sturtian, approximately 713 million years ago in Oman. While it has been argued that this sponge biomarker could have originated from marine algae, recent research suggests that the algae's ability to produce this biomarker evolved only in the Carboniferous. As such, the biomarker remains strongly supportive of the presence of demosponges in the cryogenian archaeocyathids, which some classify as a type of coralline sponge, are very common fossils in rocks from the early Cambrian about 530 to 520 million years years ago, but apparently died out by the end of the Cambrian 490 million years ago. It has been suggested that they were produced by, sponges, cnidarians, algae, foraminiferans, a completely separate phylum of animals, archaeocyatha, or even a completely separate kingdom of life, labeled archaeata or inferibionta. Since the 1990s archaeocyathids have been regarded as a distinctive group of sponges. It is difficult to fit chancellariids into classifications of sponges or more complex animals. An analysis in 1996 concluded that they were closely related to sponges on the grounds that the detailed structure of chancellorid sclerites, armor plates, is similar to that of fibers of spongin, a collagen protein, in modern keratose, horny demosponges such as Darwinella. 
However, another analysis in 2002 concluded that chancellariids are not sponges and may be intermediate between sponges and more complex animals, among other reasons because their skins were thicker and more tightly connected than those of sponges. In 2008 a detailed analysis of chancellariid sclerites concluded that they were very similar to those of hockerids, mobile bilaterian animals that looked like slugs in chain mail and whose fossils are found in rocks from the very early Cambrian to the mid-Cambrian. If this is correct, it would create a dilemma, as it is extremely unlikely that totally unrelated organisms could have developed such similar sclerites independently, but the huge difference in the structures of their bodies makes it hard to see how they could be closely related. Topic. Relationships to other animal groups In the 1990s sponges were widely regarded as a monophyletic group, all of them having descended from a common ancestor that was itself a sponge, and as the sister group to all other metazoans multi-celled animals, which themselves form a monophyletic group. On the other hand, some 1990s analyses also revived the idea that animals' nearest evolutionary relatives are coanoflagellates, single-celled organisms very similar to sponges' coanocytes, which would imply that most metazoa evolved from very sponge-like ancestors and therefore that sponges may not be monophyletic, as the same sponge-like ancestors may have given rise both to modern sponges and to non-sponge members of metazoa. Analyses since 2000 2001 have concluded that yametazoa more complex than sponges are more closely related to particular groups of sponges than to the rest of the sponges. Such conclusions imply that sponges are not monophyletic, because the last common ancestor of all sponges would also be a direct ancestor of the yametazoa, which are not sponges. A study in 2001 based on comparisons of ribosome DNA concluded that the most fundamental division within sponges was between glass sponges and the rest, and that yametazoa are more closely related to calcareous sponges, those with calcium carbonate spicules, than to other types of sponge. In 2007 one analysis based on comparisons of RNA and another based mainly on comparison of spicules concluded that demosponges and glass sponges are more closely related to each other than either as to calcareous sponges, which in turn are more closely related to yametazoa. Other anatomical and biochemical evidence links the yametazoa with homoscleromorpha, a sub-group of demosponges. A comparison in 2007 of nuclear DNA, excluding glass sponges and comb jellies, concluded that homoscleromorpha are most closely related to yametazoa, calcareous sponges are the next closest, the other demosponges are evolutionary aunts of these groups, and the chancellariids, bag like animals whose fossils are found in Cambrian rocks, may be sponges. The sperm of homoscleromorpha share with those of yametazoa features that those of other sponges lack. In both homoscleromorpha and yametazoa layers of cells are bound together by attachment to a carpet-like basal membrane composed mainly of type 4 collagen, a form of collagen not found in other sponges, although the spongin fibers that reinforce the mesol of all demosponges is similar to type 4 collagen. The analyses described above concluded that sponges are closest to the ancestors of all metazoa, of all multi-celled animals including both sponges and more complex groups. However, another comparison in 2008 of 150 genes in each of 21 genera, ranging from fungi to humans but including only two species of sponge, suggested that comb jellies are the most basal lineage of the metazoa included in the sample. If this is correct, either modern comb jellies developed their complex structures independently of other metazoa, or sponges' ancestors were more complex and all known sponges are drastically simplified forms. The study recommended further analyses using a wider range of sponges and other simple metazoa such as pacozoa. The results of such an analysis, published in 2009, suggest that a return to the previous view may be warranted. 
family trees constructed using a combination of all available data, morphological, developmental and molecular, concluded that the sponges are in fact a monophyletic group, and with the cnidarians form the sister group to the bilaterians. A very large and internally consistent alignment of 1,719 proteins at the metazoan scale, published in 2017, showed that I sponges, represented by Homoscleromorpha, Calcarea, Hexactinellida, and Demospongiae, are monophyletic. E sponges are sister group to all other multicellular animals. E tenophores emerge as the second earliest branching animal lineage, and IV pachyzoans emerge as the third animal lineage. Followed by Cnidarian sister group to Bilaterians. Topic: Notable spongiologists. Topic: Use. Topic. By dolphins A report in 1997 described use of sponges as a tool by bottlenose dolphins in Shark Bay in Western Australia. A dolphin will attach a marine sponge to its rostrum, which is presumably then used to protect it when searching for food in the sandy sea bottom. The behavior, known as sponging, has only been observed in this bay, and is almost exclusively shown by females. A study in 2005 concluded that mothers teach the behavior to their daughters, and that all the sponge users are closely related, suggesting that it is a fairly recent innovation. Topic. By humans. Topic. Skeleton The calcium carbonate or silica spicules of most sponge genera make them too rough for most uses, but two genera, Hippospongia and Spongia, have soft, entirely fibrous skeletons. Early Europeans used soft sponges for many purposes, including padding for helmets, portable drinking utensils and municipal water filters. Until the invention of synthetic sponges, they were used as cleaning tools, applicators for paints and ceramic glazes and discrete contraceptives. However, by the mid-20th century, overfishing brought both the animals and the industry close to extinction. See also sponge diving. Many objects with sponge-like textures are now made of substances not derived from porphyrins. Synthetic sponges include personal and household cleaning tools, breast implants, and contraceptive sponges. Typical materials used are cellulose foam, polyurethane foam, and less frequently, silicone foam. The luffa sponge, also spelled lufa, which is commonly sold for use in the kitchen or the shower, is not derived from an animal but mainly from the fibrous skeleton of the sponge gourd Luffa aegyptica, cucurbitaceae. Topic. Antibiotic compounds Sponges have medicinal potential due to the presence in sponges themselves or their microbial symbionts of chemicals that may be used to control viruses, bacteria, tumors and fungi. Topic. Other biologically active compounds Lacking any protective shell or means of escape, sponges have evolved to synthesize a variety of unusual compounds. One such class is the oxidized fatty acid derivatives called oxalipins. Members of this family have been found to have anti-cancer, antibacterial and antifungal properties. One example isolated from the Okinawan Placortis sponges, Placaridine A, has shown potential as a cytotoxin to murine lymphoma cells. Topic. See also Sponge Reef Project